Howdy YouTube, I edited this core boot script and added a uh, build dependency checks and I wanted to do a fresh installation of Debian. So I decided I'm going to make a video on installing Debian net install, I guess. Which is actually pretty easy and straightforward So, and it could get you a fairly minimal sort of setup with i3 gaps or you know your windows manager of choice so anyways i guess now to the video the graphical installer does not work with video rom with core boot so we're gonna have to go text-based so unlike arch the installation process for the operating system is dead simple you put in your network information some usernames etc I'm using a net install ISO that includes the non-free firmware due to the Wi-Fi card on the X220 and the university internet creating this catch-22 of not being able to register your device before you use a browser. Luckily, I haven't managed to overdraft my phone's data plan yet, so just specify the time and set up the partitions, and the guided partitioner will do a pretty decent job. The installation does take about half an hour, so it isn't that bad. This entire setup can be done in an hour and a half if nothing goes wrong. So the next thing you need to do is specify an archive mirror. And then you need to specify what software you want to install. So the net installation installs a minimum Debian installation. It's around 300 megabytes. It allows you to specify what software you want to install. And there's a little menu coming up. For this uh, minimum install, you just select the uh, if you want to participate in the popularity contest and then it will show you a slide that uh, will have the little software selection. For this uh, type of minimal install I just check the standard system utilities everything else should be blank and next it will ask you to install Grub so just make sure you select the right hard drive. So after that the installation is complete but it is um, going to take a bit to restart and, and you'll be greeted kind of with a minimal installation of an operating system. There's uh, no uh, Zorg, uh, there's no sort of like login window or anything like that, just the prompt. So I just ran an apt-get command to install some software I wanted, for like oh, i3 Windows Manager Zorg, uh, I think I'm using Network Manager Genome. After Running it, I forgot to fill out the network interfaces file to hook up to my phone, but after that it unpacked everything and um, within a bit I was able to actually start X and get that running. So i3 generates a very primitive sort of like i3 config file that does have everything you need to get running. So I just uh, press Alt enter and got to a prompt and with URXVT. Yeah, the footage was a little bit jarbled, so I decided to show off the finished product. So this is in 1610 because I transplanted it to the X200, but hopefully it looks good enough. I actually prefer 1610, but I bet YouTube is going to put black bars on the side, or my video editor probably is. So. I had some problem with getting URXVT transparency to work, but it turned out to be something to do with the Zorg config. So that's why my X defaults looks a little bit uh, more than what it actually is. So for this like simple installation, I just have like some really basic stuff specifying like it. I mean transparency and. You got the scroll bar being off, and of course I got rid of that uh, glaring white background and then added a tint color. So you can just go through and change the values, change the color, you can do a lot of things like that. I think on my desktop I have the font change, and I actually have it where if you like press control plus it makes it bigger and smaller and stuff. But uh, yeah, I had to install some other stuff for that to work. So the next thing is um, you're going to have to modify the bash profile and it, it won't actually give you a bash profile to start off with. I, I don't think it gives you an X default file either, 
but just make one of these, make these files, it's .x, uh, capital X, defaults, and for bash profile, it's uh, dot, uh, .bash underscore profile, and for that, it's just gonna execute that, the code in the bash profiles file when you log in. So I just want it to start X up. Another thing is, if you wanna do an i3 gaps installation instead of normal i3, Debian doesn't actually have a i3 gaps package. So what you'll have to do is either compile it yourself or use someone's GitHub script that makes a .deb file for you to run. And I went and I found a, I went and downloaded the script. All you have to do is on GitHub, you can do git clone or you can just download the zip file and then type in unzip and go in the directory and it's just a script. So you, you might have to ch, uh, ch mod it to be executable, I can't remember. But after that, you just run it and it will um, let you just I'll install it. You just press yes a bunch. It'll even append the lines to the end of your i3 config files. You're going to need to add some lines for the gaps configuration. But after that, there's a few things uh, you'd probably want to add to the normal uh, i3 config. I think I added uh, NM applet, which will launch the uh, genome uh, network manager stuff the bottom so you can actually like look at your network config. I also added um, the which uh, is like this image viewer so it actually pulls up the background from I guess I made a background directory it's just a photo of Lane so one other thing you want to add especially if you're gonna post in a you know some screenshot threads or whatever you're gonna have to add Scrot, I think that's pronounced Scrot, but that's not that hard. Uh, I have, uh, I just copied the line from my old config file since I didn't want to figure it out, but I bound it to Alt Shift P, and for that to work, you just, well, bind sim in the config file. All it does is when you have, um, you specify a key code and that runs the command after that. So I just have it specifying the key code for uh, mod one, which is going to be alt or windows most likely, and then uh, shift and P. So alt shift P. And oh yeah, I made a screenshot directory that stores the screenshots. But I guess that about sums it up.